Hello everyone, it's Emily speaking and today we're going to be talking about Tetralogy of Fallot. So, before we begin, let's go through some multiple choice questions to see what our base knowledge is. Question 1. Is Tetralogy of Fallot a cyanotic or an acyanotic heart defect? A. Cyanotic, B. Acyanotic, or C. Both? Think about whether it would cause a left to right or a right to left shunt. The answer is cyanotic. Question two. What is one of the features of Tetralogy of Fallot? A. Left ventricular hypertrophy. B. Truncus arteriosus. C. Ventricular septal defect. Or D. Atrial septal defect. Think about how many abnormalities there are in Tetralogy of Fallot. The answer is ventricular septal defect. Question three. What is the gold standard investigation for diagnosing Tetralogy of Fallot? Is it A, chest x-ray, B, pulse oximetry, C, ECG, or D, echocardiogram? Think about what each investigation would be able to reveal and try and relate it to the problem which Tetralogy of Fallot presents. The answer is D, echocardiogram. Okay guys, so let's begin. We're going to start with what the Tetralogy of Fallot is, symptoms and history, investigations and differential diagnosis, clinical examination and OSCE tips, and then finally we're going to summarise and go back over the MCQs to see whether it's gone in. So, what is the Tetralogy of Fallot? It's the most common cyanotic congenital heart condition with four heart abnormalities. There's a ventricular septal defect, overriding aorta, this overrides the VSD, a right ventricular outflow obstruction, so a narrowed infundibulum, and right ventricular hypertrophy, so this is secondary to the outflow obstruction. This results in a right to left shunting of deoxygenated blood at the VSD level. The narrowing of the pulmonary artery makes it hard for deoxygenated blood to get to the lungs. Blood can move more easily into the left ventricle than the lungs via the VSD. Deoxygenated blood bypasses the lungs and goes straight around the rest of the body. So, as we can see here, this is a normal human. This is an isolated ventricular septal defect. You can see the blood comes from the left side of the heart due to the higher pressure into the right side. Whereas with Tetralogy of Fallot, the shunt is from right to left. Deoxygenated blood comes into the right atrium, into the right ventricle. There's ventricular hypertrophy here because of the narrowed entrance into the pulmonary arteries. And so the pressure inside the ventricle is higher, meaning the blood shunts into the left ventricle and goes around the rest of the body via the aorta. Cyanotic versus acyanotic heart defects. So, a cyanotic heart defect will be caused by a tetralogy of fallot. This is normally a right to left shunt in the heart. Also, transposition of the great arteries will also cause this. An acyanotic heart defect will be left to right shunts, so a VSD, a PDA, or an ASD. It can also be caused by an outflow obstruction, so pulmonary stenosis, aortic stenosis, or coaptation of the aorta. This isn't due to deoxygenated blood going around the body, however it is due to not enough oxygenated blood going around the body. So here are the presentations of some of these. A left to right shunt, so that's breathless or asymptomatic because it's a acyanotic heart defect. Whereas a right to left shunt, the presentation will be, they might be cyanose, they might be blue. So here we can see tetralogy of phallus included in this. Outflow obstruction in a well child, they could be asymptomatic. However, when they become poorly, they can collapse with shock due to not enough blood getting to their organs. Symptoms and clinical examination. So tetralogy of phallus will often present during a three to five day period when a PDA begins to close. The patient will become cyanosed and the degree can vary. However, it can be quite subtle, so look out for it. They can be uh, poor when they're feeding. They can sweat during feeds. They can become hypocyanotic, 
where they're crying, breathing deeply and rapidly, but not in significant respiratory distress. They can also be tachypneic, so they're breathing quite fast, and they can have a harsh systolic ejection murmur. Let's look at a history and see whether we can pick out the key points. A one-day-old infant born at full term by uncomplicated spontaneous vaginal delivery is noted to have cyanosis of oral mucosa. Baby otherwise appears comfortable. On examination, respiratory rate is 40 and pulse oximetry is 80%. A right ventricular lift is palpated. Sound 1 is normal, sound 2 is single. A harsh third systolic ejection murmur is heard at left upper sternal border. Another presentation is that the baby may be severely cyanotic at birth. Alternatively, the baby could have a hypocyanotic spell that, that are episodic and, the typically, and a typically murmur heard may disappear during this time. This presentation is particularly life-threatening, so requires rapid intervention. What investigations would we do for this? The echocardiogram is the gold standard investigation. This is the definitive test to see whether a baby has tetralogy of fallot. Pulse oximetry can also be used. This would be normal or low. It depends on the degree of the pulmonary stenosis. An ECG could reveal right axis deviation due to the right ventricular hypertrophy. However, it's hard to interpret this on a neonate. A chest X-ray can reveal a boot-shaped heart this is because of the right ventricular hypertrophy and the overriding aorta. If normal, that doesn't exclude the tetralogy of fallot. A hyperoxygenation test would reveal no significant increase in PaO2. Here's an echocardiogram so you can see the defects very clearly in it. Differential diagnosis. Other cyanotic congenital cardiac abnormalities, for example, hyperplastic left heart syndrome, transposition of the great arteries, truncus arteriosus, or tricuspid atresia, although they would have no change with PaO2 with hyperoxia test. Pulmonary stenosis is hard to differentiate clinically from TOF, so needs echo an echocardiogram. And a VSD. This is also hard to differentiate clinically, so it also needs an echocardiogram. Primary pulmonary disease could also be a differential diagnosis. What would we see in a clinical examination? While well, a newborn baby examination is completed at birth, the baby may be cyanotic, they may be, have episodes of breathing rapidly, and you may hear a harsh systolic ejection murmur. Here's some tips for OSCE. Know the difference between a cyanotic and an acyanotic heart defect presentation. Remember the grading system for murmur classifications. The tetralogy of fallot murmur is heard loudest over the upper left sternal angle. Here's the murmurs. There's six of them in total. The first three have no thrill and the last three have a thrill. So, grade one, this is very faint, so not heard in all positions, and you have to be very experienced in order to hear this. Oops, sorry. Grade two is soft and can be heard in all positions, however, it's still quite hard to hear. Grade three is loud, but there's no thrill. Grade four is loud with a palpable thrill. Grade five is heard with the stethoscope partially off the chest and there's a palpable thrill. And grade six is heard with the stethoscope completely off the chest and there's a palpable thrill. So in summary, guys, we're going to go back over the multiple choice questions and see whether that has all gone in to your heads. Okay, so question one. Is tetralogy of phallitis cyanotic or an acyanotic heart defect? A, cyanotic, B, acyanotic, or C, both? It's cyanotic. Remember, it's a right to left heart shunt. What have you learned? Question two. What is one of the features of tetralogy of fallot? A, left ventricular hypertrophy. B, truncus arteriosus. C, ventricular septal defect. Or D, atrial septal defect. It's C, ventricular septal defect. Question three. What is the gold standard investigation for diagnosing tetralogy of fallot? Is it A, chest x-ray, B, pulse oximetry, C, ECG, or D, echocardiogram? The answer is echocardiogram. 
Okay, well done guys, that's the end of the presentation. I hope you've learned a lot and I hope it's been interesting. Please come back for more revision materials and we hope to see you soon. Bye.